Welcome once again to Octane Mobile Gaming. The new deck is out for the next event, but first we're gonna look at the news link and we're gonna have a look at the updates for this event. So we're not gonna look at Power Jam 5, so we're not interested in that. We're gonna look at Ruby Boss. So Ruby Bosses will make it will be making their entrance into the commander event. They'll take the space of the diamond bosses. Curlian bosses are gonna go one level higher, so they're gonna become um, stronger. With the new HP update, hopefully they're not as strong as they were in the last commander event, which was absolutely rubbish. So HP update, um, bosses health for this event has been decreased to, pre to, um, to previous historical level. So now they've gone back to historical level that they were before. So we are we are no longer gonna see bosses in the command event with one quadrillion health. So they've gone back to historical level what they were before they were updated on the last command event, which is really good. Really like that. GVG update: the wardens are getting a buff. They've got their HP and their armor increase. We'll see how much they've got. How much they have been increased when GVG starts. We're gonna go straight into the cards, but first I just wanted to say something about the current state of the um, the current state of the game. Now, in the current state of the game, the meta has changed a bit. Where it was um, in recent months, based on Power Gem production since the introduction of Gem Crush, uh, it's more well before even Gem Crush. Since the introduction of the new cards in December, it's based mostly on boosts. So, wherever you can get a boost, it's always important. So, they have, there are certain cards in the game or certain decks in the game that do give you massive boosts to your your cards. One of them is Glorious Golems, which we saw most people using last week in the Fire Slayer event. And it's the same deck that's going to be used this week to increase the damage output of this deck. Because this deck is an Immortal Killer deck. The Glorious Golems is an Immortal Killer deck. So you can see that certain decks are really good utility decks so whenever you come across a deck that's a really good utility deck please please invest your gems in getting those decks however it's the method has changed in a way where you're not gonna take lots of cash throw it at an event deck and you're gonna perform really really well since the introduction of Gem Crush, that has changed the total meta. You can invest loads of cash in an event deck, and somebody who hasn't got event deck but has got certain historical decks are gonna perform far better than you are gonna perform. So that's a big change to the events overall, which in and of it, in and of in and of itself it it's got it's good and it's got is bad you've got your pros and your cons the pros is if you've been in the game for a while and you've collected specific decks you can perform quite good with your historical cards the bad thing about it is that a lot of the big spenders are no longer gonna be throwing ton loads of cash at the event deck because a lot of the event decks are utility decks within their own event, which can be a bad thing. So let's see where the game goes from here. It's in a state of change because Gem Crush is a really good mechanic. However, it's got problems that needs to be sorted out. Part of the problem that I can see with Gem Crush is that you you can have a deck that can deal massive damage, but you can not replicate that same amount of damage with every attack. It's a hit and miss. 
For example, last week, the debt that our, I started to use around about Saturday could generate up to four, five, six quadrillion. And I used it for three days and the most I got out of it was 900 trillion. And I couldn't replicate the 900 trillion on every attack and I couldn't figure out, figure out how to actually generate that amount of um, power. I started to see a pattern um, emerging where when you combine, say for example, this current deck or the Nicole deck, which I'm going to speak about a bit later, because the glorious golems are generating power gems of their own, when those power gems crush and they get overridden by another deck, say Nicole overrides the dark power gems, it doesn't just override those dark power gems, it actually upgrades the power gems as well. And if those power gems get crushed, you can create power gems of higher level. For example, power gem 15, 16, 17, 18, up to power gem 20s. Now, if you've got a cluster of, say, seven water power gems or seven fire power gem, ra uh, ranging from power gem 10s to power gem 20s, just seven, five to seven, and you swap those ones with other gems sprinkle all over the board it consumes those consume all of those gems and it creates a big bang for your buck it's not like before when you had to create a chain you link all the gems of the same affinity together to create a massive massive bang so it's it's a bit confusing and it's something that nobody can figure figure out but it is what it is we'll work with it and see how far we can get and if we can actually come up with a formula to replicate the same amount of damage on every turn anyway let's get into the, the deck for this week so the first card up is sumerian uh, pantheon this deck is from sumerian mythology that's where you get gilgamesh you get um a few other cards uh, i've read the books and i've actually done a bit of research on Sumerian mythology and this one will create six water power gem fi fives it's got a nine gem charge rate and a three turn cooldown it's got two passes on it um, the first one if you've got 15 or more water gems on the board it will create an additional four water power gem fours which is quite good it's got a one turn cooldown so this passive can be active activated every turn as long as you've got 15 or more water gems on the board which makes it quite good because if you've got the support card which creates water gems you can actually tap into the ability of this passive as long as you've got water gems on board the second passive is really good as well the second passive is a trap mechanic we've seen it before on other deck whenever you get hit you create one water power gem five you can create one additional per 100 immortal killer intensity which is quite good so with this passive you have the ability to actually create a full board of power gem fives which can be crushed and you can get quite high level power gems on the board so i'm really loving these two passive along with the battle skill it's a nice gem producing um ultimate form however it hasn't got the ability to boost itself or boost the other cards on the deck so the entire deck hasn't got any boost but the deck in of in and of itself is a deck that can create lots of water power gems on the board next card up is the master collection card now the master master collection card is marduk so marduk will create six water power gem fours again it's got a passive the same passive where if you've got 15 or more water gems on the board it will create an additional four water power gem fours it's got one turn cooldown this doesn't increase the increase in power gem production actually will come from your ultra rare 
making the ultra a bit more powerful than your master collection card but it's a nice master collection card it hasn't got a boost as well which makes the deck a bit of a um downer but as long as you've got the uh glorious golem deck you can actually do quite well within the event if you get the event deck if you haven't got cards that are going to boost your immortal killer damage output you're not going to use this deck to actually do quite well within the event which is a bit of a i don't know i would say downer so this one which is omega mother goddess you become immune the battle skill you become immune to enemy damage for one turn just almost like the nicole deck you will dispel all enemy buffs which you really need because the enemies this week are running buffs uh we're gonna speak about the um, buffs uh soon the passive when you're hit so the trap mechanic ag again when you're hit by the enemy you create one water power gem five plus one additional per 100 immortal killer intensity now that part of the but that the but alongside the battle skill the passive makes this card a bit more powerful than the master collection card so if it's a choice between the master collection card and the ultra rare, the ultra rare is far more powerful than the master collection card so i'm really liking the ultra rare now the main card or the event card will create four water power gem fours it's got the passive like the mass collection card because it's just a um less powerful version to the master collection card if you've got 15 or more water power gems on the board it will create four water power gem twos and its uh, battle skill creates four water power gem four water power gem force so this is not a bad um main card it's okay it's not really powerful but i really like the the main card it's okay it's a good main card the support card for this week which is called ninma will heal you for ten thousand percent of your recovery it's got a passive that when you get hit it will create six water gems and this passive has got a one turn cooldown so every time you get hit which you will be getting hit every turn you can create six water power gem if you've got two of these cards on the board you will be creating 12 water power gems on the board you need 15 to activate the passive on the master collection card the ultimate form and the main card but you can get those from other areas such as relics or even from your ultra rare so it's not bad the three cards we need from this week for this week's collection two of the cards are really good the first card up is a support card uh it's um barbarossa the red barbarossa um skill isn't really that great without having the full deck so Barbarossa isn't really the best of the three. There's a toss-up, however, between this one, Seabound Sniper, which I believe is quite good. Would I say it's the best of the, the, the two? Uh, yes, I would say it's the best of the two, simply because of its uh, passive. Now, this card will create four water power gem ones. If you are celebrating, it's double so it can create eight water power gem ones now the passive every free turn you can create four water power gem ones and if you're celebrating it creates an additional four which makes this card able to create 16 water power gem ones which is really really good really like this card it's from the nicole deck which is a really good deck so out of the two i think it's the best it's the better of the two Procumbius is still real, it's still a really good card. It's got a battle skill that 
there's only I think there's a few decks within the event that's got this battle skill where it creates something called a constricted clamp. Now it creates four water power gem ones and place a constricted buff on the enemy for four turns. Constricted clamp increase the enemy damage taken by 20%. It's got a free turn cooldown, so you can actually you can actually stack damage on the fourth turn when you activate the battle skill again, enable it in the enemy to take 40% more damage, which is really good. It doesn't produce a lot of power gems, but it does enable you to actually do more damage to the boss, which makes it a really good card as well. So it was a toss up between these two cards, but I prefer um, a Sniper rather than Procumbrius. But they are two good cards. So if you could get one out of these three cards, I would say if you get Procumbius, you're, you're, you've got a good card. If you get Sniper, you've got a good card. Barbarossa isn't such a good card. So that's your deck for this week. I'm going to go into the vault and I'm going to see what I can get. Do I really need to get cards from the vault? I don't. From my perspective, I don't really think I need the ultimate farm simply because I've got the Nicole deck and I've tested the Nicole deck and I think it's going to do really well within the event as long as you combine the Nicole deck with the Glorious Golem. However, 900% damage is a big step up from the 400% damage that Nicole will give me. But if I don't manage to get anything from the... From the vault the nicole deck it is but just for the sake of the video and i know that you guys like to see uh, the draws from the vault i enjoy seeing the draws from the vault i like to see other people draw from the vault i enjoy seeing my own draws from the vault so we're gonna go in and we're gonna go up to three tiers if we don't get if i don't get anything from the vault say a master collection or ultra i'm only gonna go up to tier three and i'm gonna save my gems so here we go. This is the first draw and let's see what we get from the first draw. Hopefully we get a master collection card or ultra on the first draw. Let's see if we get a gold. No gold, no gold, no gold. So that's it. Nothing else. So the first draw is not that brilliant. So the keys are okay, but the evolution coins are a kick in the teeth don't think we really need those garbage in the vault let's go up to tier two and see what we get from tier two if we can just get a master collection card or an ultra rare it would be really really nice something to celebrate about let's see no gold no gold no gold that's it and here is a guarantee support card and it's looking quite depressing this week So again, we've got garbage. We don't really need these stuff in Exalted Saber. We don't really need these stuff in the vault. You should have a separate vault for all those stuff. The keys are okay, but that's absolute garbage. Let's see what we get on the third tier. And if we don't get a gold card here, I'm not gonna go up to tier four because tier four is 2,500, which costs quite a bit so no gold no gold that's it again this is a guarantee relic so I'm not gonna go any further so so far I've spent 2400 gems and all I've got to show for it is a main relic and a support card if I sh if I went up to tier for that uh, extra 2500 gems which the total cost would be 4900 gems and if i don't get a gold card on tier 4 all i'll have to show for it is just uh, two main relics one main card one support card so i'm not willing to go that far so we're gonna stop here and that will be it for the vault for me this week so the bosses will be running Fear, Armor, and Poison this week. So your support card has got Poison 5, 
uh, master collection card event card has got armor six and ultimate form ultra rare has got fair six on them so those are your so what is a buff two is a buff the fair and the armor is buffed to the boss poison is a debuff so those are what we're working with so let's have a look at the decks that I came up with. So this is one combination. This one works really, really well. Tried it in uh, Legend Trials. This one also works really well. You double up on the amount of damage that you can do because this one will give you 2,500% um, increase to Immortal Killer. And this one also will give you 2,500% increase. However, if you add Glorious Golems to the mix, you can create far more powerful power gems on the board and both combination are really good if you haven't got glorious golems but you've got high performance unit area and you've got unit area you can add them to the nicole deck and you can do massive massive damage so i think those are the way forward those two combinations are the way forward if you manage to get the event deck however you've got a 900 percent increase you can put the ultra on board you can add nicole to the mix and you've got a brilliant deck we'll do possible deck combination tomorrow and see if we can come up with anything else apart from the from this combination that's able to do anything within the event so that's all i've got for you today guys like subscribe Please, if you have got any questions, you can leave it in the comment below. This is Ike Dane saying peace and have a great day. Bye for now.